Hello. Thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Tim Plunkett. I'm a principal software engineer at Acquia on the Drupal Acceleration team. I'm the co-initiative lead for the Layout Initiative and the primary author of the Layout Builder module. Um, uh, do, I, do I need to push this button? Or are we good? Sorry. No, push? Fine. Great. Thank you. Uh, so the good news is Layout Builder is stable. Uh, yay! Uh, the other news is that that's not really news. Uh, that's been true since May. Um, but so the 8.8 release, which is coming out in a month, uh, will be the second release where Layout Builder is stable. Still something to celebrate. Uh, what's happened since then? 12 bug fixes, a couple of more criticals, a uh, couple minor cleanups, one feature that allowed for custom labels for sections, which isn't really, there's not much there. Uh, why is that? The reason is that in the last six months, the focus has shifted away from the stable layout builder core to contrib. Uh, now that there is a both a stable layout API and a new module that uh, you know with the UI patterns that have been added, contrib is really where the focus has been. Uh, there are a lot of new. Uh, it's it's kind of a, an experimentation ground for for all the new ideas. So I'd like to talk uh, for primarily about that. Um, so as the, the 8.7.0 version we launched was sort of the MVP, the minimum viable product, uh, we had to hit that deadline. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been stable six months ago. and We'd be waiting for it for next month. Uh, so we left out. There were some of the things that were left out uh, that we knew would be good, but we just didn't have time to land in time. The other thing is that there wasn't really uh, time for user testing. Uh, we had had feedback on their initial designs, but from the time we had the designs to the implementation, there was no time to actually validate the implementation and see if it really actually planned out when people were put in front of it. Uh, and while the functionality has been really well received, the user experience really isn't quite there yet. Uh, and for me, I want it to be just as good to use as it is, uh, you know, the functionality is really not worth it without uh, a, a nice experience for people, for the content authors, for site builders. Um, you know, the end user of your site will, won't be able to tell the difference anyway. Uh, but as, as, a, as a core module, I think the user experience is really important and we need to sort of improve that. Uh, the good news is that uh, there is a contrib module currently called it Layout Builder UX, LBUX. Uh, and it's kind of implementing some of the designs that have been proposed. Uh, there's been a, a couple different implement, uh, improvements suggested. We've only built one so far. But the whole module could eventually be moved into core. Uh, there's a lot more work to do. There's both more, as I said, there's designs to be implemented. There's also a lot that could be uh, suggested. A lot of suggestions needed from end users, from the community, from everyone. Uh, but one of the struggles there is we don't really have, uh, it, throughout all of Drupal Core, there's no real way to share designs and between designers and developers and the community to sort of iterate on those and comment on those. Um, I noticed that, for example, the Claro initiative used Figma a great success. Uh, so far with this work, we've been using a tool called Zeppelin, uh, but it's not really integrated into the Drupal issue queue at all, uh, and there's or into Drupal Slack. Uh, so it has been a real challenge to sort of take those uh, proposals and then work on them as, as a cohesive group. Um, so if anyone has any suggestions on that, that at a meta level is very important, in addition to the actual designs produced by those tools. Another module we've been working on is called Layout Builder Everywhere, uh, which is maybe not the final name of it. It's kind of a placeholder name inspired by the Panels Everywhere module, if anyone had ever used that. Uh, the idea is that you can use the Layout Builder UI to configure the header, the, the sidebars, the footer, the, the regions of your page around the main content. Um, it includes a nice little integration with the Toolbar module, which I will show you. Uh, it's not quite done. There's a couple known bugs, but there's a, there's a lot that could be done there. And it would be really nice, as you'll see from my demo, that I really don't like the block UI. I worked on the block UI twice. I rewrote the block UI twice and I still don't like it. And I think this is maybe the third time's the charm and we'll be able to, to remove that sort of way of interacting with the Drupal site and really embrace the layout of the UI. Um, so I'm going to take a break now and demo these two modules. Uh, I'm going to try to do that. There we go. All right, so this is a stock Drupal 8.7.0 install of Umami. Um, this is just, as I said, I've made no changes to this site. Uh, so the Umami by default uses Layout Builder. Uh, but 
Lampeter only currently focuses on this main region. So in order to change this content, there's a layout tab that once you click it, you can then you know, rearrange your fields. <coughs> Bless you. Um, so there's, you know, there's this body field which has all this text. There's the picture, there's these tags. It's not really clear exactly where this tag section ends and where this picture begins, or if that's part of this body, or if these are all these paragraphs are one thing. Uh, there is a, an ability to toggle like the content preview off, which will allow you to see that this is actually a text field, an image field, body field, etc. Um, but this is just sort of the only real way to be able to do that. It's either all or none. You either see your content or you see just those uh, placeholder labels. The other thing is that this, as I said, only affects the things in this blue box. You can't change uh, anything in your, your sidebars over here in your header. So if you really want to put a new block above this more featured articles, uh, you, you can't do it from this page. You have to literally go and you open the mat, you go to structure, you go to block layout, and then you find, and you don't know what that's, so what was it, more featured, artic more featured, more featured articles is on the page. So I have to go down and read through this sidebar. It's probably the sidebar. So if I just place, place you know, any old block, and the sidebar, uh, you know, and save that. Then if I refresh this, maybe it'll be there, but I still don't see it. So if I go back, oh, it's because it's below it, so I have to drag it up, and then, rem and then save it, and then go back. And that's a lot. And it, there's a lot of steps there, and there's a lot of confusion. I happen to know exactly that block layout underneath structure was exactly how you did that. If you're the, the content author, or if you're just a, a site builder that has not been building the, the underlying structure of the site, but is more focused on the end part, I don't know how you know that. I don't know how you find that. Uh, that's not discoverable. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, there's your block, and you're happy with it. That's fine. And you can, from here, using Quick Edit, you're, uh, you can you know, change the, the title of that. That's nice. But that's not enough. So the Layout Builder Everywhere module, this is a new, a different site, same install, but I've installed one module, which is Layout Builder Everywhere. Uh, you'll note that the Layouts tab is gone. It's now up here. We're in view mode. Now there's a new layout mode. If you click layout mode, uh, you now see a visual representation of all your regions. All the, these, uh, these regions are all global. You, know, you have your sidebar, you have this one down here in the footer, and then you have your content region. So if you click on the sidebar, then you get a nice little layout builder UI here. And you wanna you wanna you wanna add a new section. Let's add a one column section for now. And in this block, we can add our powered by Drupal. Make a little and there it is. And then you can hit save. And you never had to leave this page. You know, there's no more d digging through the admin UI. There's no more wondering where it's going to show up. It's going to show up exactly where you put it, at the top. If you want it to be somewhere else, you can move it somewhere else. Um, so that's sort of the idea between Layout Builder, or, or the, of Layout Builder everywhere. Going back to this Layout tab, uh, you'll see this is the, so those are stored as configuration. All those changes in the sidebar are stored as configuration. As this is a node, uh, any changes to this node's layout will be stored in the content itself, will be revisionable, will be content moderationable, uh, publishable, uh, it will be translatable through the, the normal entity workflow. Uh, you can even see here, this has changed to publish, draft, archived. Um, and this still, this inherits you know, the, the fields that are defined above it, like the, at the, the display level for all articles will have their fields in this order. But maybe on this one you really like that picture and you want it to be above the tags. So once you save this, you are editing the layout just for this specific carrot. Let's hear it for the carrots article. Um, the thing is, this still doesn't resolve the issue of um, being able to see, understand exactly what it is that you're moving around, as I mentioned before. Once you click into here, you still have the same problem. So that's where the... Uh, yeah, install the Layout Builder UX module uh, and, and wait for it to install. I don't have a third site. <laughs> it's not like I pulled a dish out on a cooking show. Um, wow. 
cool. There we go. So when I refresh this, you'll see slightly different UI here. Uh, so now, as you hover over them, you'll, it'll tell you exactly. Let me just make that a little bigger. Uh, that's too big. There we go. Uh, you'll see exactly what field it is that you're manipulating. Uh, you can see the section name. You can see your the different fields. Uh, if I want to relabel this section field, this was the one feature we landed in the last six months, uh, to like my cool section, you know, then it's, it's labeled as my cool section, uh, which for some people helps them with their editorial flow, they, you know, mapping out the page, what the, that section is intended for. Because you can have many different sections, uh, you know, you can have a four column, uh, and you could even, you could call it four column, or you could say like, this is important for whatever, for whatever reason. Uh, to communicate to your, your content authors. And that's what they should really be using it for. Um, so that's Layout Builder Everywhere and Layout Builder UX modules. Uh, they're both available on Google.org as contributed modules. As I said, they may eventually make their way into Core. Uh, there's a lot more we want to do there. Uh, but that's, that's what we got so far. Jumping back in. So Layout Builder Styles. Uh, so those two modules were written by uh, me and my team at, at Acquia. Um, these other modules are written by other members of the community, um, some of whom have been participating in the Layout Initiative for years, some of whom just had a really good idea and one day decided to help help out. Uh, Layout Builder Styles is great. It allows you to, uh, to define specific uh, styles via, like you provide a, sep a separate CSS classes, and then your front end designer goes and decides what CSS is actually loaded for those classes. Um, and you can uh, name these styles. So I'll show you an example. Um, but the, 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 the important thing, <laughs> the feedback we got from Layout Builder was that it's too powerful. Uh, it allows you to do too many things, or it gives too much power. And so you'll, as you'll see from the next couple modules, most of them are about reining in that raw power. Uh, and this, this module, to me, is a good fit for a trip, uh, not necessarily for core, and you'll see, you'll see why. Um, so let's see, if I go, I've already set up one style. Um, I'm gonna get rid of my this is important section, not that important. Uh, if I go back to my cool section, you'll see the style drop down. Uh, I have no style, I'm gonna make it fancy. It's the one style I've set up. So now, everything is purple and cursive, because that's what fancy means. <laughs> um, so if you were to, and if I go and show off the uh, Let's see, it's under configuration. As I said, the that, that fancy uh, layout push styles. Uh, this applies to all to sections, and it just applies this thing called my fancy class everywhere, uh, yeah, to, to each section. And then in CSS, I have defined somewhere, you know, that that f fancy means cursive and purple background. Um, so you could even have a, each uh, individual style could you know, I have more semantic classes. Um, and you could even have things where it's like fancy right, and it would be like, oh, you know, float right or something. I don't know. I don't write CSS anymore, so I'm really kind of behind on this, but I know it's really cool. Uh, you can also define these styles to be available for both blocks and sections. Uh, so this is a section level one, so it'll apply to everything contained within it. Um, if you use it on the block side, it'll be more granular. Uh, but once, as you, uh, if I go back to this, as you add, other styles, you know, with a, just any label. Um, cool. What's the, yeah, cool. Let's see. My cool style. Style section. I don't have any CSS written for this, but so it won't really do anything. But if I go back into my section, now I have cool, fancy, and none. Um, so this is a really nice way for you to, for your front end themers to, or front end developers to provide you a set of styles and then allow all your content authors to choose from them. Uh, yeah. uh, speaking of restricting things, the Layout Builder Restrictions module, uh, by default, everyone on your site can place every block on your site. They can use every layout on your site. Uh, that can kind of both be overwhelming for them as uh, just the, the the choices available are things that you may not ever really want to place. Like, uh, for example, the email address of the author of the article you're looking at. Not usually something you'd want to, you know, place or move around that much. Uh, so if you never want people to be exposing email addresses, then you just remove this block from being uh, being available. 
the, the one caveat is that right now it's uh, global. There's no per role uh, configuration of this. I know that they're working on that. The problem is that when you take the entire list of blocks and then multiply it by the entire list of roles, you get a page even worse than the current permissions page. Um, so we're waiting for like three-dimensional VR or something. I don't know how they're going to fix it, but they need to work on something. So, and that's really truly a problem of, of core itself too. That's not just a, a problem in this scope. Um, so if anyone has any ideas of how to solve, if you've ever thought, I really like the permissions page and I want to fix that and make it even better, but I want, to be, I want it to be more challenging, then you can help them solve this problem. Um, and I can show you this, uh, the layout builder restrictions. So, where's my, it's under content authoring, nope. Yeah, crap, where'd it go? Oh, is, is it directly on the thing? Right, thank you. Uh, I'm working on articles, manage display. Layout, yeah, box available for placement. So it currently allows all content fields, all core fields, all custom fields, uh, and then you can, you know, these, yeah, there you go. That's a lot. Imagine that, but then all the roles. Um, you can restrict, say, oh, they can't place any forms, they can't place, uh, you know, any views or inline blocks. And this kind of gives you an idea of all the things that Layout Builder can place. Uh, and then you would hopefully say, you know, this doesn't really make sense in an article, or this doesn't make a sense on this content type and sort of lock things down for your users. Uh, similarly, similarly, uh, there's also, you can, as I said, you can restrict the layouts. Core uh, layout builder ships with only four layouts, one, two, three, four columns. Uh, but I know there are many modules, especially for the uh, themes like Bootstrap uh, and whatnot, that will ship their own layouts. So this can get, you know, this can get kind of long. Uh, and you might not want to let certain authors use uh, certain layouts, or you may never want to ever have just four columns. It's, uh, doesn't fit into your site theme, so you don't want that one around. Um, so that's your option there. And there you go. So, oh, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> so that's a lot about Contrib. Uh, but what about Core? Like, that's that was fun. It was a fun six months. It was a good summer, you know, working away from the Core issue queues. It was kind of a nice break after getting everything stable and in. Uh, but what's what's next for Core? Uh, there are a lot of feature requests. There are, I think, I counted like 50, 57 current open feature requests, which is great. Um, some of them, uh, you know, just like these modules, uh, they could be done in Contrib. You know, you don't always need a core patch to, to allow new functionality. A lot of this could be enabled through Contrib. Uh, I, I call out three here, visibility conditions, section reordering, and nested sections. Those would be very difficult to accomplish via Contrib, and I think they do need to be worked on directly in core. Uh, they also need people to work on them. Uh, some of these issues, like for example, the uh, visibility conditions, there's already code in place. It's just not quite done yet. And actually, the, I think the blocking issue there is that it needs some design. It looks like Drupal 6 panels. You know, and we don't want Layout Builder to look like Drupal 6 panels. We want it to look like Layout Builder. So trying to figure out the best way to allow authors to say, I really only want this block to show up you know, for, for this role, or I, to the end user, not just for selection, but like actual display, or I really only want this thing to show up on Tuesdays. Any sort of, vis any sort of condition about when, or not, when things are going to be displayed to the end user, uh, we don't really have in core, we have nothing like that in core, and not, uh, except for on um, block page, the block UI, which once again, I don't really like the block UI. So we, we, we need some help there. A lot of these other things like the section reordering, for example, um, that just that needs user testing. That needs people to actually go and say, you know, this doesn't work in Firefox on Windows computers, or this one uh, doesn't really work if I try to use the keyboard. Um, so uh, anyone who uh, is interested in any of these things can can participate and contribute. Uh, yeah. So there's 87 bug reports right now. We fixed a lot of the bugs uh, before release, and uh, as I said, uh, 13 criticals and majors uh, over the summer. Um, over half of the bugs already have a fix proposed, uh, which is a, really lowers the bar to, to helping push those issues forward. Some of them don't have issue, uh, fixes proposed yet. They just are known bugs. Oh, that doesn't work. We don't know why. We do, or we do know why. We don't know how to fix it. Um, the good news is that nothing's critical. We got rid of all the critical bugs. That was sort of the, uh, the, the caveat to becoming a stable release, um, including the critical performance bugs fixed over the summer. 
Um, there on Thursday, I will be available uh, with a table of a bunch of people are going to be working on layouts. Um, so please come find us if you're here on Thursday. And also in the Drupal Slack, we are in the, uh, the layouts channel. And there are people all over the world, uh, 24 hours most of the time, there's someone in there chatting about layouts and lots of, lots of very knowledgeable people in there who are very willing to help. So please come answer and ask, or ask and answer questions there. <coughs> Um, yes, yeah, so this is more information about the, the contribution on Thursday. So now I'd like to open it up for questions. The trick here is going to be getting people to the microphone with all the people on the floor. There, in theory, other people can come up to these mics, but you have to ask the, mic, the question into a microphone. Uh, do we all have a room, a passing one? I guess, because that's kind of wired in. Hmm? Yeah, but there, you, there's... Could you, I mean, if people can't get there, could you repeat I could also repeat the question if, if I can hear you. So let's start. Who's first? Someone has to be first. David? Well, I'm just trying to unstrap this. I don't know okay. how I'm going to ask the question. I'll ask the question, sure. Thank you. Hi. Oh, this doesn't work. This yeah. 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 Great. Okay, for you watching the recording on YouTube next year, sorry. Um, at what point? Does Layout Builder become the only sensible default for laying content out in Drupal? And should we just deprecate the blocks interface entirely? So could everyone hear that question? Because I could barely hear it. OK, you can hear it. I can't hear it. Um, I, I think there is, I think that Layout Builder everywhere, this, this module, uh, is the first between that and the visibility conditions. I think those are the one, that's the one-two punch to remove the block UI. If we land both of those in core, I think we can deprecate the block UI. There is no additional functionality provided by the block UI um, after those two issues land, which would be wonderful. Uh, that's not the answer. That's the answer to your second question. First question of it being the de facto approach to laying out your content. Um, there is a who, show of hands, Panelizer. Who uses Panelizer or has used Panelizer? Okay, so I'd say a third of the hand, a quarter of the hands went up. Um, about page manager or panels? All right, about half the hands went up. Uh, what about display suite? About a third. And then uh, who has used the paragraphs module but for layout reasons? I feel so bad for the two thirds of the people who raised their hand. Um, paragraph, just, just to jump to the, well, I'll, I'll let someone else ask the question about paragraphs. But to answer your question, um, Panelizer, there's an upgrade path, or mig sorry, a migration path from Panelizer to Layout Builder that is written. It is not yet complete until visibility conditions lands, because Panelizer has visibility conditions permitted. Um, so Panelizer is gone. That's that's done. You don't need that anymore. Uh, there is an issue. This was asked yesterday during the key uh, the keynote about. Uh, using the Layout Builder UI on custom routes or on pages like Page Manager defined pages, there is a patch in the sorry, there's a patch in the Page Manager issue queue to adopt the Layout Builder UI, uh, which then will allow you to continue using the functionality that Panels is provided in D7 or Page Manager provides in D8, but with the familiarity of the Layout Builder UI. Um, so that one's done. Display Suite. Uh, I'd say of the display suite is an interesting module because display suite the module itself does a couple things, but there are a lot of display suite extras modules. There's a lot of dis, you know different display suite field, display suite template, display suite. There's a lot of extra stuff there. The core display suite functionality is already covered by Layout Builder. Um, in fact, when we wrote the module in the first place, it was we want to take the 80% best case of Panelizer and the 80% case of display suite and combine them. Um, and that's sort of what we, how we ended up with Layout Builder. Uh, so I can't really say that all of the extra parts of Display Suite are, are solved, uh, but they're, they're well on their way. Uh, so to sum that up, I think that already Layout Builder has become the de facto layouting solution for new sites. Uh, and for those that are on Panelizer, it, with the migration path, it should become the de facto solution for all sites that are existing that have been using Panelizer. Um, so I th that that would be that's what I would like to see going forward. Thanks for the question. Who's next? So while uh, testing layouts, we were 
trying to replace paragraphs with yeah. layout build, as you mentioned, but we failed hard with uh, translated blocks okay. and revisions. Yes. So is the question there, uh, is there a solution to this issue? So the question was uh, was about parag uh, migrating from paragraphs to layout builder. Um, but hit stumbling blocks with regards to translation and revision ability. Um, the revisions things worries me because revisions are supposed to work fine. But if it's revisions and translation, then that makes sense. Uh, layout Builder, currently there are two contributed modules that provide Layout Builder <coughs> translation approaches. One is uh, Layout Builder AT for asymmetric translations, and one is Layout Builder ST for symmetric translations. Um, there are, Layout Builder itself does neither. It just doesn't provide translation support. Um, and the main reason is we really couldn't pick between the two. And I, Ted, would you, which one were we going to pick? AT or ST? Or do you want to come up and answer? Guess, yeah. phone a friend. Ted, who wrote both of those modules, is going to come no, and answer no, that question. Uh, who wrote the other one? Uh, I think it was the guy, the display suite, Swentzel. Maybe. Oh, yeah, so the display suite author, Swentzel, who's yeah. here somewhere, also wrote the other module. Thank you, Ted. Uh, so basically, we kind of ran out of time for translate. So to be clear, translations work for Layout Builder in the sense that if you place a field, it will show the right version of the translation. So don't feel like if you have a multilingual site, you can't use Layout Builder. If you have a view that you place and the view is translated, it will display the right um, version of the view. So don't like. There's a lot of use cases that aren't not covered, but the basic use case of if you place something and it's translatable. The rest of Drupal takes care of that. Um, but the ability to have different um, layouts per translation, um, the, what our goal for core is what basically the layout builder symmetric translations does. And that is basically like your layout will not change per language. And we, we wouldn't, the idea right now is we wouldn't let you change the actual layout, but everything you put in the layout as far as inline blocks, other strings, and plugins that declare translatability, would, you'd be able to translate it, but it'd be in the same place across languages. Um, asymmetric translations would be that um, you have a different layout completely per language, and it's signed up totally divorced. There's no syncing between languages. If you have a Russian um, page and an English page, you can be you can have them totally different. That's sort of more for localization um, than translation. Um, so the goal for core and the thought from the product managers was having this totally different per language without having the ability to sync them is kind of a no-go on a product management standpoint because if, if you want the layout to be the same but just have like your inline blocks translated, it's very difficult to do that manually. So if you have like six languages and you try to like, okay, I'm going to change this, put this block over here, and now I have to change it on all six languages. That, that becomes very difficult. But um, so the, the first one would be get in the symmetric translations 9.1, I guess, yeah. would be the earliest at this point. And then is there enough use case for the other one? But if you want, take a look at, um, yeah, the layout builder symmetric translations and asymmetric translations in contrib and uh, file bugs or whatever. Um, they both, I think, work pretty well and uh, they have a fair amount of usage. Thank you. Yeah. And that was Ted Bowman, Ted Bow on Drupal.org, thank you. Um, so the, to, for pa the paragraphs case, the symmetric translations with inline blocks yeah, would be the closest one. That's already solved in paragraphs, but yes. what about uh, content moderation, like drafts, untranslated? So the, the content moderation of, well, so revisionable, like content moderation, publishable translations, uh, is already, that's a solved problem in theory by the interaction of those two modules. And I didn't think that Layout Builder complicated that. If there is a, a, so if we're stacking all of those things and there's still bugs and you're using Layout Builder ST, file a bug report in that issue queue because that's a problem. And I think also Paragraphs makes a different expectation than Corda yes. as far as so. So par Paragraphs has a very different sort of data model and workflow to get through that. So it doesn't quite line up one-to-one -one with inline blocks. So there may be a way to solve the problem you need. It, it would probably be very hard for, the stumbling blocks would be in the migration, not necessarily in building the, the solution. 
Um, so we, we can talk about this more if you're around on Thursday. Um, next question, there was, okay. How do you see, um, I know there's currently an issue exposing layout builder information via REST and JSON API. Yes. How do you see the future of layout builder working with uh, decoupled solutions and is that solvable? Okay, so the question was, uh, current, well, layout builder does not currently expose any information over REST or through JSON API. Uh, and there is an issue to allow that. Um, but assuming that we do that and allow them to read from it, A, which should be easy and fine and safe and not scary, uh, that's one thing. But what if we go the full route and allow rights and everything else? And what's the future of that? Um, honestly, I don't have personally uh, a good idea for the, I don't have a vision for that. I think it's, it's kind of exciting. There's a lot of open-endedness there. Um, I don't think, the only reason is that we were trying to land JSON API and play out builder module in the same release at the same time. So the, the decision by the product managers of Drupal core was to just turn off all JSON API access to, to layout builder, just so we didn't, on the last day before the deadline, introduce some major catastrophic bug. Uh, there's, st there's no real reason for it to, st to still be off other than just momentum, that she needs momentum, some, some effort. Um, but I, I think we, I, I, I think that in the same way that when we landed Layout Builder and we took a breath and then a lot of contrib modules sprung up, I think if we enable JSON API access to all the layouts data and then take a breath, I think there will be a lot of interesting stuff proposed, um, either for court or via contrib. Um, and if you have an idea, like, Please share it. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff we can build. So, thank you. Yeah, on Thursday, if anybody's around, it would actually be very easy to open that stuff in a contrib module, but nobody's yes. actually done it. So, if you're looking to be like, we want to make a decoupled layout holder, <laughs> yeah. uh, let me know. And there's but definitely you can open up the API yourself, but then you're on your own. Yeah, so as, as Ted said, there's, oh, in addition to the patch in the issue that allows you to have access, you could also, if you don't want to run a patch for that, uh, you could turn enable that uh, access via contrib module, but then as you're on your own in terms of accidentally letting people mess with your stuff. So that's kind of scary. Uh, was there another hand over here? Yes. Um, one big issue I'm seeing is uh, the, the roles and the permissions. So for example, having a certain section of the layout builder be accessible for an editor and not for other roles is something I think you mentioned during the slides. Is that something that's planned to get picked up by more, or you just offset it in culture? Because that's, for us, for example, that's a deal breaker for using it. And that's why we use Chrome for a lot of stuff to make more granular control of the layout. Okay, so the question was about roles and permissions and granularity in terms of editing sections, uh, especially in comparison and contrast to paragraphs. Um, yeah, there are, when we were working on the module, there was one permission, which was uh, do all the things. Uh, we split it into two permissions per content type. So for articles or recipes, you can enable the ability for uh, anyone with that permission to edit the layout of that content. Or there's another permission where you could let anyone who already has edit access to that content be able to edit the layout. Um, so one is where you just want someone who can only do layouts, who comes in and can't even edit the words on the page, but can move things around. That's one permission. And the other one would be for them to be able to do anything. That does not address your specific concern of being able to lock down individual sections or individual fields or inline blocks. Um, and you're right, there is a gap there. I think that there, I don't know of any issues where people have raised that as a problem. Uh, and more importantly, people haven't told us what they want. Uh, so I can ask you very kindly to open that issue and say what is wrong and what you want it to be. Yes. There. I, the thing with permissions is that every permission is kind. Of, they're all provided by individual modules, so you end up having the same discussion over and over and over again. There's a very long running issue about uh, the block UI, the one I want to kill. Uh, that has one permission, and it's administer blocks, and it's considered. Uh, you only give that to people that uh, you trust, and if there's a security vulnerability related to that permission, then you shouldn't have given them that permission. Like, it's just basically like a black hole of permissions. Um, and there was a very, very long 
running issue to granularize that more. Um, and yeah, it's a fight you have to keep fighting on every module. So if there are specific things we can learn from paragraphs with regard to that, then we should. Layout builder restrictions doesn't solve some of that? Layout builder restrictions does not solve that because, well, I mean, it, it addresses some of it via contrib in terms of saying, oh, you can't add that one field or whatever. But the more complex things like, uh, you can't add the header to the first section or something, or like only people, only certain roles can edit the top of the page, and everyone else can only mess with the bottoms of the page. Any sort of granularity there is currently must be done custom. It's doable via hooks and stuff. You can define your own system, but that would you would have to bake your own business logic into the code. There's no UI for that currently. Next question. There's no more questions. Okay. We're, Everyone knows everything. We're good to go. Is there anything anyone would like to see demoed? Ted? Question. What is the thought about enabling layout folder by default, say, on content types? Yeah, so the question was uh, when or how do we decide when to enable layout folder by default on content types? So the good news is that it's already enabled by default in Umami for recipes. Uh, and as far as I know, they're working on making it for most of or all of the content types. Um, with the, that change in Umami is very s politically straightforward to make. Technically, it's the same work for all of things. But making that decision in Umami is, is straightforward because uh, it's a demonstration install profile. It won't need, you don't need to push that changes out to new, to new people. Making changes to the standard profile has been difficult and slow going. Um, there are, for example, in Umami, there are lots of complex uh, or custom block types where you can have like a, ha a header, a banner, uh, uh, what's the hero image is like the new, it's, the, it's not a new term. Hero image has been a term for a long time, but it's new to Drupal via Umami. Uh, whereas the standard profile only ships with basic block, uh, which is quite the term, and uh, doesn't have a builder in all, in the installed at all. I don't, I think most people just avoid making changes to standard profile because it's too hard a fight to fight. And they just do it in Umami, they do it in Contrib via like the lightning installation profile. Uh, I, I would like to think that maybe with the uh, changes with Olivero coming in, um, that Olivero could be built uh, with Layout Builder at the forefront instead of using the old page templates and stuff. Um, so I think that may be the, back, the way to get into that instead of trying to modify Bardic to be Layout Builder E. Um, but you know, anyone can fight, anyone can pick up that and propose a change to standard profile if they choose to. Okay. What's next? We have like five minutes left. Hey, Suzanne. Um, so I did some testing of the Layout Builder, not used in the way that it's mostly been demoed, but used um, as a landing page builder tool, so it has no, uh, like it's used with a content type with no fields. Um, and there were certain things in terms of the UX that were problematic. So I'm wondering in terms of solving for that use case, if you think it would be best to build some kind of contrib module, or if there's room to make any configuration changes. So the question was, uh, we can try to get this right. So no, it was uh, using, Layout Builder has mostly been demonstrated as a content offering tool for specific content that has a lot of structured content with fields and whatnot. And when using Layout Builder for uh, a content type with no fields in terms of basically replicating a layout, a landing page builder, uh, the UX choices that we made don't make as much sense. Everything was catered around fields. Um, and so how, what do we do about that? And I think the answer is twofold. One, uh, the, in the short term, just because people already use page manager or panels for landing pages, is finishing that work to bring the layout builder UX into that and then make those specific choices in that module. The other option would be to abandon all the sort of baggage of page manager and panels and all the expectations that comes with it and focus specifically on solving that one problem in a dedicated contrib module um, with the intent of eventually putting it in core. Uh, I know Dries has specifically said he wants there to be a very streamlined like landing page flow. Um, and that's the thing that we need to build, but no one has taken it on yet. Um, but I would really like that. I think the idea of uh, being able to tailor it to that specific experience and not just reusing the same thing that we're using for the field-based one would be really great. 
Uh, but as far as I know, there's no work specifically focused on that. I'm curious. Is this on? It's on, but you need to get really close. I have to talk really close. Yeah. Um, I'm curious because I wrote the paragraph box module a while ago. It has very little usage, and it's not really the, the workspace that I work in on a daily basis. But a lot of people raise their hands that they use paragraphs. And is this a useful module still? <laughs> I. I Paragraphs block, paragraph blocks rather, as the monster called, is I think extremely useful. And I think like in the layout Slack, um, I think it's mentioned on, like once a week at least, uh, especially for people who are already on paragraphs and want it. So just the short version is that it exposes each of your individual paragraph items as blo uh, to layout builder so that you can rearrange them, which is great and really cool, and especially solves that use case of people using nested paragraphs to achieve a layout solution. Um, I don't know that, I think as inline blocks improve, people may move away from it um, if it solves their use case. I think Paragraph still has a very, very specific uh, use case uh, around authoring, but I think that inline bot blocks and layout builder uh, will sort of decrease Paragraph's usage for things it wasn't intended for. As far as I know, the, the paragraph authors are thrilled that we're finally doing, because they never wanted anyone to use it for layouts. Um, so they're happy that the module's finally being used for what it was intended for. Um, but no, I, th and I thank you for the having paragraph blocks out like over almost a year ago now, right? Two and a half years ago. <laughs> two, two and a half. Time flies. Uh, has really helped adoption of, of layout builder and really lessened the burden for people using paragraphs. <laughs> Question in the back. As a, as a bit set up, do you have any way to list and identify the nodes that you do or write that they have to perform? So, it's easy to, to just solve them if there's like hundreds of them. Yeah. How do you keep track of them? So the question was, uh, when sort of administrating or auditing a site, how do you identify which nodes have been overridden with layouts? And there is an issue for that in the, in the queues. Um, it's... It, the, I, and I wrote a patch for it, and it basically just like lists them and gives you a revert button or something. Like, it doesn't do anything more because we don't. I don't know what people want it to do. So, we can talk, or you can jump in that issue, or I can point you to that issue, and then you you can um, help us tell like tell us what to do or suggest something. You know, Ted. But currently, you can make a view that filters on overrides. That that's right. So it's not hard to do, and it doesn't help you revert them, but it'll help you identify them. As Ted pointed out, just for the purpose of listing them, to literally just know a how many you have and which ones they are, you can make a view and filter to only include ones that have layout overrides. So that's a very not great, but short-term quick fix uh, for finding out what the scope of your administrative nightmare is. Uh, and the front. So this is maybe more of a meta question about just sort of layout. Yeah. config and Drupal 9. Uh, as a sort of more DevOps person, one of my big frustrations is people demanding database backups for the purposes of matching up like their block yes. config to the content UUID. And I'm tired of having the argument about you know not exporting databases to do that kind of thing, but I don't have a great answer. I know it's more of a broad question, but like, <laughs> That's At some question. point, I think like the layout ecosystem's got to have an answer for like that <laughs> content, other than just saying like your block is busted. Yes. So the question was uh, syncing. So syncing the content and config of blocks and layouts uh, between environments is very difficult because if you just push your config, it references UUIDs of content entities that do not exist yet. So you both have to sync over the blocks that you place. <coughs> as well as the fact that you placed them uh, right now with block module and core. With Layout Builder, it's very similar. Um, it's not as bad. It's not better. <laughs> uh, you, can use, you can use Layout Builder in theory to sidestep some of those problems, but really you can't. Because as, long, as soon as you start placing those blocks that, uh, that are created, you have the same exact problem. So it's... And I, the same problem exists with menus, for example. Menus are content and config. The fact, the menu blocks are config, but menus themselves have to be created. Um, I, I don't like the idea of making that our problem, but no one else is solving it, so maybe it can be. Uh, yeah, it's a very long running problem. It was like the, the one major unsolved thing when we have CMI. It's like everything's great except for that problem, which 
is a huge burden. Um, and you hit every time you build anything remotely complicated. Um, so yeah, I no, definitely don't have an answer for you. We've, everyone, I think, everyone who's been writing config and content entities that work together has been waiting for someone else to solve it. And it just hasn't happened. Um, but I'm sorry. And there was one last, last question in the back. Is there any uh, thought about supporting web components? Uh, we have an external design system called Bolt. So the question was about web components uh, and integrating that. So uh, I, I, I don't have any thoughts about that, but there are thoughts about that. The idea is that anything can be exposed to layout builder. Anything, anything can be, like paragraphs, blocks. Paragraph blocks is a great example. They just pull all these paragraph item, individual items out and you can now put them in layout builder. Um, there are about a half dozen different ways you could do that. The problem is just finding which one was the best one, or you know, finding a best practice. Um, so I would, I don't know of any modules that are already starting to do that. I'm surprised that, I, I, I would bet that's gonna come soon. Um, it, it's extremely doable. Uh, and whether it be, I, mean, that's, I think that's the problem, is that there's such a proliferation of, of component libraries and, and systems that live outside of Drupal in people's minds and in implementation that it's not as clear to tie them to each other. Uh, but it's, it is absolutely possible from within Layout Builder to expose anything. Um, and then you could use Layout Builder restrictions to turn off everything else that's not a component and then you know lock them down to that, to your system. Um, so it'd be really exciting to see, but as far as I know, it does not exist yet. Uh, and I believe that's time. So thank you all so much for coming.